everyone's talking about Tanahashi. What percentage so, chance do I think that Tanahashi has of winning? Bro, I don't know. And you know what I would do? I would say 50%. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because what was the originally scheduled match? It was CM Punk versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the AEW title, right? That was the original match. Yes. CM Punk got hurt, and he was removed from that match. Okay? So, Tony clearly wanted to see CM Punk versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the AEW title. Well, now he can't because CM Punk got hurt. Unless... You either bring back Tanahashi later when CM Punk ends up champion again, or Tanahashi wins the title, CM Punk comes back, and it all out, you do the match he wanted to do in the first place it couldn't do, CM Punk versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the AEW title, and CM Punk wins. So it's not like this has happened before where something throws a monkey wrench in Tony's plans and he swerves to get back to where he was going originally. So if he really wanted to do that match, then Tanahashi wins the interim title. And when Punk comes back, you do Punk and Tanahashi, the originally planned match, and then Punk gets the win. Now, I explained that. Well, why did I say 50%? Well, the other half of that 50% is that if CM Punk would have wrestled Hiroshi Tanahashi at Forbidden Door, I don't think Tanahashi is winning. He was going to lose at Forbidden Door. So, that's the other 50%. He wasn't scheduled to win, so he's probably, maybe, 50% not going to win this time. But for anybody thinking that Tanahashi has zero chance of winning the AEW title, if you look at history and the way that Tony has handled issues where he couldn't put together a match he wanted to do, he does his little swerve to get back to the match he wanted to do in the first place. So don't think there's zero chance. I haven't actually gone and looked at the uh, at the schedule for G1. but well, there, here's uh, every, the flaw. There's the well, hold flaw on. in what you're... <laughs> hold on. Okay. Everyone is doing six matches and not eight, okay? And I was told that there is only one Wednesday where Hiroshi Tanahashi is working a G1 match, which means, with the exception of one Wednesday, he is available. It would be a tough flight there and back, but he could appear every Wednesday except one during the G1. So it's not impossible that he could win this title. It's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely because of the G1. And I think if you wanted, if you were a gambler that way and say, I'm going to put money on Tanahashi, I think then you also must look at the odds on the Okada match. Because if you look at Jay White, Okada, Page, and uh, Adam Cole, you have three AEW guys, or two AEW guys, Jay White and Okada, and if you're going to switch the belt and actually have Tanahashi hold on to the AEW title throughout the G1, you know, leading into I don't I don't know when all out is, but you know, if you're going to have that happen, then go ahead and actually swap the belts and have Hangman Page pull off a big upset so he could have a big match when he goes over to Japan. I I think I, again, I, I know what you're saying, and, I, and I, I, I see that. I just see this is where politics start to dribble back in and, you know, the importance of those titles, which while G1 is going on, you wouldn't think would be important and doesn't – most fans would go, okay, I can displace this and, and put it in this part of my mind, but I don't know if the companies necessarily want that to be the case. And, well, you know, to travel thing. back and forth with Tanahashi, I think that is asking – that's asking a lot. Well, he doesn't have to be there for every show. Certainly not. I mean, no. he doesn't have to do every single Wednesday that he's available. He could do a couple of videos, but he could appear. He's not. My point is, he is not for sure off AEW for six weeks if he's in the G1. He could make appearances. He could defend the title on Dynamite. And here's the thing. With the G1, uh, uh, virtually every single time, there is somebody that beats the IWGP heavyweight champion during G1 to set up a match post G1. I think the champion, I think the IWGP champion needs to work the G1. So you could have Jay White retain the title. 
you could have Okada win the title from Jay White. Maybe, maybe the whole reason that Jay White won the title was so Okada, Okada could win it back on Forbidden Door. But if you're talking about politics, if Tanahashi wins the AEW title, the swap does not need to be an AEW guy winning the IWGP heavyweight title. FTR can win the IWGP tag team titles. So the New Japan belts that come over here are the world tag team titles. And the AEW title that goes over there but also stays here because Tanahashi could work shows would be the, IW, or the uh, AEW championship. So you can make this work with the G1 and with... Uh, a political both sides get one belt you could do that i still believe that moxie is probably going to win despite everything i just said but the, i'm just pointing out it, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that hiroshi tanashi wins the aw title it's not less than zero percent at all no not a, not a, not at all not at all and I, I if i had to put money on it i'm probably putting it on moxley and i'm putting it on jay white as well too getting I can see more of Jay White trying to start his own group or having more, you know, of the Bullet Club storyline being involved because of Cole and Page all involved in that, too. And Okada somehow getting screwed out of this uh, because I just now that you've taken it off Okada and put it on White, to me, now it's the build for Okada and... He can win it back before January 4th, but I can see a story and I can see possibly where that title stays out of his grasp until the end of the year, until those January 4th shows. But but who knows? We got a long way to go. And Sunday, we got to get out of the way first. And there's enough matches that we can go through without having to fantasy book out too much. Sangha versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down. Thanks her. Uh, lit her on the apron, pull, um, puts elbow on her chin, threw her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, no. Lee, in fact, identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend <laughs> versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? He beat Legend. Again, a little I guy? Now Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. No. No, these were two women. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. you got to be kidding me today. God. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.